I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Audio is the number one thing that you need to get right in order to gain viewers. But that being said, you don't need crazy expensive microphones like the Shure SM7B with a fancy audio interface in order to get a good sound experience. I've owned many microphones over the past couple of years, starting with this MCU-01C 50 euro USB condenser microphone to the Rode Anti-USB, which at the time I'm making this video comes in at around 138 euros, the Blue Yeti X 142 euro microphone, and of course, the most recent one, a Rode NT5 XLR pencil condenser microphone, which comes in at roughly around 180 euros. And let me tell you, I can make all of these microphones sound exactly the same. And without wasting any more time, let's jump into OBS and improve your audio. Before we get into the settings though, let's talk about a few fundamental things that you need to consider. Number one, the positioning of your microphone. This is just a standard USB condenser microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. What this polar pattern essentially means is that the microphone only picks sounds up in front of it. But this also depends on the quality and the nature of the microphone itself. Like a big condenser microphone is more likely to pick up sounds from around it than my Rode NT5 which has the same polar pattern. But nonetheless, make sure that you speak into the front of the microphone. Not in the top, not in the back, in the front. If you're noticing a lot of echo in your room, then make sure to bring in the microphone a bit closer to your face. This is certainly going to help you a lot. Anyway, let's talk about our first setting, the gain. It doesn't matter if you're on Windows, macOS or even Linux. Every single one of those operating systems has an option to increase or decrease the microphone level. What we're aiming for is that if you speak normally into your microphone, that you are within the yellow range. This is like a good baseline for any filters that we're going to apply later on. You have it? Let's move on. Now, a lot of OBS audio tutorials out there just focus on OBS itself. But the truth is, OBS filters just lack control and feedback. I want you to download and install the Reaplux VSD FX Suite, which provides us with one, the same tools that we already have inside OBS, just with more control, but also with an equalizer. And this is going to change a lot for this microphone. Inside OBS, click on the settings icon besides your microphone and go to filters. In here, we want to add a VST plugin. Hit OK and make sure to select Rear Gate. This is a noise gate. What a noise gate does is that it cuts out less audible sounds. For example, a really cheap microphone might have some noise that you want to get out of your recording. The first thing I want you to do is to drop down the value to the lowest possible and slightly increase it until you can hear the bad sounds getting filtered out. Then I want you to leave it at that. You don't want to go any higher because a noise gate should just cut out annoying background sounds. Not keyboard clicks because these are typically too close to your vocals, which may result in some stuttering and we don't want that. So now let's move on to something more interesting equalizing. Add another VST plugin, let's call it equalizer, and select a rear EQ. Now equalizing is something that a lot of people get wrong. An equalizer for vocals should not really be used to boost your voice. It should be used to fix your voice. For example, if a microphone lacks bass, and you typically know that you have a deep voice, then you might want to increase the lower frequencies a bit so that you get your voice back to normal. What you see on screen is the EQ I've set for my personal voice. And I think it's a good baseline for yours as well. But make sure to try out the settings yourself. The last thing that we want to set is a compressor. What a compressor does is that it compresses your audio peaks. For example, if for some reason you get louder, then you don't want to leave your viewers with bleeding ears. So make sure to set the compression right. The first thing I want you to do is that you want to drop down the ratio from 10 to 1 to 4 to 1. And the reason for that is because 4 to 1 is far less aggressive and it makes the compression sound more natural, at least for vocals. I want you to pay close attention to where your average volume sits at. And I want you to set the threshold slightly above that value. The reason for that is because we want to compress only louder sounds and we don't want to compress a regular talking voice. 
And yeah, that's it. So let's just compare these microphones before and after we did our tuning. This is a sound test that is going to prove that a cheaper microphone can sound exactly the same as an expensive one. This is a sound test that is going to prove that a cheaper microphone can sound exactly the same as an expensive one. This is a sound test that is going to prove that a cheaper microphone can sound exactly the same as an expensive one. This is a sound test that is going to prove that a cheaper microphone can sound exactly the same as an expensive one. This is a sound test that is going to prove that a cheaper microphone can sound exactly the same as an expensive one. This is a sound test that is going to prove that a cheaper microphone can sound exactly the same as an expensive one. And it's just as simple as that, ladies and gentlemen. So if you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like and heck, even a sub. While you're here, you might also want to check out my live streaming channel, streaming some day. If you've liked this video, then you're certainly going to enjoy this one. But otherwise, all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around. <laughs>